and welcome to the Bible Preacher of God, Brother Jacob. <clears throat> and today we continue with our lesson uh, just before, during, and after the seventh day. And uh, we're going to pick it up right where we left off from last week because this is a thing that's very, very important to understand. You know, you hear people talking about uh, when they get to heaven, what they're going to do, and how they're going to dance around and all of that. That ain't in his book. But what is in his book is what's going to happen when the Lord comes, when we get into the Lord's day of rest, and the seventh day embodies this, and this is what we continue with therein. And uh, what I want to do is start out just kind of sealing that sixth day to make sure we understand what's actually happening. So let's go to Malachi 3, sorry, Malachi 4 and 1. Malachi 4th chapter and verse 1. Because we're kind of picking up right where we were in the seventh day, but I want to kind of revisit that just a little bit so that we get a good understanding of what we're dealing with. Because when the Lord comes back in fire, as we read in Isaiah 66 and 15, that's the trumpet is blown and the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. That ushers in the reign of Christ. He shall reign forever and ever. So right here in Malachi, fourth chapter, uh, watch what the Lord says here. Because we go on First Thessalonians, sorry, Second Thessalonians, first chapter, verse seven. It also talks about how the Lord is revealed in fire from heaven, destroying them that know not God and them that obey not the gospel. So here we have right here. It says, "For behold." The day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave neither root nor branch, because the Lord is bringing in his reign on this earth when this day comes. So now let's go back up, back up in the same third chapter, from the same chapter of Malachi, to verse 16. And I just want to make sure we understand this. the six days closed out here. He said, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought often upon <clears throat> and thought upon him, sorry, and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, said the Lord, in that day. When I shall make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son <clears throat> that serveth him, then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Which points us to Revelation's 20th chapter, verse 4 through 6, and 1 Corinthians 6 chapter, verse 22 through 3, rather. So now we're going to look at when the Lord returns, what is he doing for his servants? So let's do this. Let's go to Luke 19 chapter, Luke 19 and 15. We're going to Luke 19 chapter. And actually, I need to actually uh, uh, start at verse 11, my bad. <clears throat> now, beside me, I have these charts. And... Before I really get deep into this thing, I want to kind of reiterate what's going on here. Because as we expressed in part one of this, God had created, uh, had worked for six days. And on the sixth day, he created man. And he told man, look, I'm giving you six days to labor. But the seventh day is my day. It's the day of rest. In it, you shall not do no work. Now, these continuation of these circles above this line that uh, represents man. This line up here represents the days of heaven. Spoken of in Deuteronomy 11 and 21 and Psalms 89 29. So this top band of circles represents the days of heaven and each one of the circles that you see on this are a thousand years. Each one of these are a thousand years. So this top, we took it all the way out to the 14th day of the creation which represents the day of the new covenant that God makes with all mankind flat out. There will be no flesh and blood here. There will be no sin, period. And 
underneath that days of heaven, we have what God has given man. One, two, three, four, five, six days to work. The seven is the Sabbath of rest. But what if you don't believe in this thing? What if this Bible don't mean nothing to you? That's what I say. He that coming to God must believe that he is God. In Hebrews 11 chapter, so if you don't believe in God, the Sabbath day don't mean jack to you. That's why it's so hard to get people to keep the Sabbath day now. It means nothing to them. So all that remaining for those that don't believe in the Sabbath is the eighth day. And we're going to get into that part. So we're focusing now on the seventh day. We're focusing now at the close of the sixth day. And we get into what's happening actually in the sixth day. What is the seventh day record? Because we showed you last week in part one. That the Lord says when he comes... It's going to be quick when everything go down. Because he said, behold, I come quickly. We're going to read that. Plus, the Lord put it in his word and slowed it down for us to look at the elements that are taking place. Because we understand what, why Jesus said, behold, he come as a thief in the night. So now on my left hand, your right, sorry, your right, yeah, my left hand, your right, we have here the last day, which the sixth day represents the last day of work for man. That trumpet will sound that brings in, usher in the reign of Christ, which brings in the day of rest, the Sabbath day. And then for a thousand years, we're going to look at that and focus on that. And in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and take it into the eighth day. So now let's go into the book. And we're going to go to Luke 19. Luke 19 and verse 11. And it says, and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. See, Israel was looking for the kingdom to immediately appear. But there's a spiritual side that we must be partakers of or that we represent as ambassadors before the physical kingdom actually gets here. But look, let's keep reading. And he said before them, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Okay? And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Which represents Jesus, to represent the Lord. But notice what it says. But his citizens hated him. This represents Israel. Because who was Jesus' enemy? It was not the Gentile. Pilate wanted to let the Lord go. But no, he said, he called his citizens, he said, uh, verse 14, right? but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we would not have this man to reign over us. That's why when the thousand years come, Jesus shall reign. But now watch this, here we go. And it came to pass that when he was returned, so now we're talking about the seventh day when the Lord returned, when the kingdom of this world become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, when we read 1 Thessalonians 4th chapter, verse 13 through 17, so shall we ever be with the Lord. I can go on and on, but that's the first part one. We want to focus on the things that are beat of the seventh day. He said when he returned, having received the kingdom, because now the kingdom is his now, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him. That's why the first resurrection is calling the servants out. That's why we read in Revelation 20th chapter, you can read where the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. So he called his servants to, unto him to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. By trading. Now watch this. Then came the first saying, Lord, that pound had gained ten pounds. Because the Lord's word is weighty. I find when people, you start talking, they say, brother, that's heavy. Or brother, that's deep. Because you have the word of God. It's not a light thing. But his servants could know this. And they considered this. That's why he said, Then came the first sin, Lord, thou pound has gained ten pounds. Watch this. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou has been faithful in a very little. That's why to me, hey, we got, hey, we got a small coming. I'm going to be faithful to this little. Because look what he said. Uh, because thou hast been faithful in very little, thou said, have thy authority over ten cities. Why does the Lord say have authority over ten cities? Let's hold this spot and go to Revelations 3, sorry, Revelations 
2 and 26. Hold that spot. This is what's happening inside of the seventh day. We're going to have authority over cities. Mm -hmm. This is the great thing that's happening. That's why we look. That's why we keep it the Sabbath day. And look what the Lord said in Revelations 2 and 26. Watch this. And he that overcometh and keeping my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So as we saw back here in this Luke 19 chapter, this is a seventh day verse. This is about what we're doing in the seventh day. Let me keep reading. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my father. So when Christ come and reign, those that be of Christ shall reign with him. That's why it is written. We're going to read it again just to reiterate a little taste. Okay? So let's go back to Luke 19 chapter. And look at this seven-day shot. Or the seventh-day verse. Verse 18. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, be thou over five cities. So we're going to be reigning over nations. The Lord going to be giving some five cities, some ten cities. Why is that? Let's go to Revelation, the last chapter. See, we let the Bible speak, y'all. We're not going to run around talking about it's something else. Now, the book, let us know what it is. So, look, let's go to Revelation 22 and verse 12. Revelations 22 and verse 12. This again, we are in the seventh day. And we're going to point out the apostles' jobs in the seventh day. Amen. We're even going to look at David in the seventh day. Amen. And then we're going to look at that transition to the eighth day. Okay, what happens after the seventh day. But right here, Revelations 22 and verse 12. 22 and 12. Notice what it says. And behold, I come quickly. See, the Lord, when the Lord showed up, remember we read last week, at that last trunk, at the twinkling of a what? I, the dead shall rise, and those of us that are shall be changed, and shall be, shall be raised and corruptible. And those of us that are alive, we shall be changed. This is what happened in the twinkling. It's going to be quickly. And notice, he said, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. No, he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last. So now let's go back. I'm sorry. I'm going to need to read that next verse, y'all. Very critical. Verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. See, doing his commandments gives us right to be in the first resurrection. And what if you ain't worried about the, you ain't even think about no commandments? Which the Sabbath day is the seven days a part of. You ain't even getting in the city. But look, let's go back. Let's go back to Luke 19 chapter. And we're going to focus on some of the jobs during the seventh day that the book talks about. Some of the other elements that happen inside of the seventh day. So now watch this, y'all. Verse 20. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here's that pound which I have kept laid up in the neck. Oh, this one put his like. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man, thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wait a minute. He didn't get him no, no city, did he? Because he's going to be a part of the rest of the day. He ain't getting into the day, the seventh day. Look what it says. Wherefore then gave us not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming, see, I might have required my own way usury. And he said unto them, uh, stood, that stood by, take from him that pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto everyone which hath shall be given, but from him that hath not, even that he hath, shall not take it, uh, shall be taken away. But those my enemies, because Jesus got enemies, notice, which would not that I should reign over them? Look what he said. Bring thither and slay them before me. When he going to slay them? That's why I got the rest of the dead waiting. So let's look at that. 
Let's go to Revelation 20 and 4. Revelation 20th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. Revelation 20 and 1, rather. Revelation 20th chapter and verse 1. Because we close out the sixth day, he giving us rain over cities during the seventh day. So, just to reiterate, so we're good and solid. Revelation 20 and 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on that dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Like I said, the chart shows us each day is a thousand years. And like the Lord said, had written in Psalms 90 and 4, is that you watch it tonight, and Peter told you, 2 Peter 3 and 8, that one day to the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day, each one of these. So he ain't, so right here, Satan bound for that, so he ain't in the seventh day. Neither is that wicked servant that the Lord gave the word to, but no, he wasn't hiding than that, so he's going to be with the rest of the day. But look at what it says for the servants. Um, let's skip down verse uh, 4. Sorry, three. I'm going to keep going in three. And cast him into a bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. That's what we read at the end of our lesson last week in part one, that the whole earth is going to be at rest. Why? Because the king of Babylon has ceased. He stopped. He's been bound for one day to God. So now after the, the seventh day is when Satan is going to be loosed. We just read that. Now watch what he given to the saints. And I saw thrones, and there that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. You see that? Judgment was given unto them. And I saw, let's just hold this part. I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians, uh, sorry, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. Hold that spot right there. I saw, I saw thrones, and there that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Look. The New Testament told us that we're going to be judging the world. We're going to be given cities that we're ruling over. Nations that we are going to be empowered over as God. So we're going to 1 Corinthians 6, and this is during the seventh day. Some are going to get ten cities. Some are going to get five cities. Lord, I'd be glad to get one city. Amen. Okay? I would be. Come up, friends with me. Lord, just give me one little city. I will rule over that as God. Hey, hey, how many of y'all just want one? And you can just get one. Okay? So that's... Woo! So look. 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. Because he's talking to the saints. He said, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? That's how Jesus said, he that will come when I give you power over the nations. And we saw what Jesus was saying, that faithful and good servant. Look, I'm going to give you five cities. I'm going to give you ten cities. This is what he's giving to the saints. And we're going to see where it's at. He said, and, and that the world, if the world shall be judged by you, meaning ruled, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Now watch this. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? This is what he's giving to the saints. This is what we're doing during the seventh day. How much more, how much more things that pertain to this life? So now let's go back to Revelation 20. Revelation 20 and 4. <clears throat> Watch this. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the soul of them that were beheaded, for an opinion about Jesus. What they thought about Jesus. How they felt about Jesus. What the book just say? For the witness of Jesus and the word of God. We got to be a Jesus witness to get into the seventh day. And you got to have the word of God. Both of them. And then watch this. Which had not worshipped the beast. That's, what the, that's why the king of Babylon had this beast for the world to worship. Notice he says, neither his image 
sorry, uh, uh, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither have received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is that day to the Lord. That his saints gonna be giving them cities. Some are gonna be giving five cities. Some are gonna be giving ten cities. I'm like, Lord, please, I just take one. Okay, I even share rule in the city with somebody. Okay, anyway, but the rest of the dead. What's this rest of the dead? Notice, did not again until the thousand years was finished, which is one day to God. And this is the first resurrection. These are the ones that blood called the servants who traded the power, who traded the word of God amongst their brethren and their sisters. Because the one that didn't do it, he's a part of the rest of the dead that did not come up. Notice he said, Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So we shall be priests of God and, notice he said, we shall reign with him a thousand years. So that's why the king of Babylon sees it. The Lord has given us cities to rule over. We can be ruling with Christ a thousand years on this earth. So let's go to uh, Daniels. Let's go to Daniels. Daniels, the seventh chapter. This is a great, great blessing to look forward to. You want to die thinking about this stuff. You want to go, Lord, you mean to tell me if I go, when I go to sleep, if I'm about your word, I'm coming up ruling over cities? A city as God? And I'm reigning as a priest? Yes. Daniel 7. And we're going to go to Daniel 7 and uh, Daniel 7. And we're going to go to uh, verse 22. I'm sorry, verse uh, uh, 25. Daniel 7 and 25. Because he's talking about what's going to happen right before the sixth, at the close of the sixth day, then we go into the seventh day. And he should speak great words to him about the Antichrist, to him about the abomination they make it desolate. We talked about that last week. And he, against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand unto times and times and divine times. That's what the beast done said. You know, the Lord done change the Saturday, Saturday worship to Sunday worship. The Lord done change his holy days. You don't have to deal no more. He, he done made changes. That's how you know who worshiping the beast and who not. Anyway, but notice, but the judge himself sit and shall take away his dominion, that's the close of the sixth day, to consume and destroy it until the end. Notice, and the kingdom and dominion and the great other kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. So this is the judgment that the Lord has given to his saints. To rule over kingdoms and cities with Christ as kings and priests. So now let's go and get into some more of these good things, y'all. This is oh man, this is some awesome things that this book talks about. So let's go to Matthew's uh, 25th chapter. Matthew 15 and 25. This is a seventh day script right here, y'all. Again, the Lord is reiterating for those of us that are looking forward to getting into that seventh day. That's why we observe the Lord's Sabbath in today, the seventh day. Because after the seventh day, whew, we're going to look at that too, y'all. So Matthew 25 and verse 14. Matthew 25 and verse 14. Matthew 25 and verse 14. Again, we are Bible Christians of God. I know we got some new people subscribing, so we, we come straight from the book, y'all. That's why I got these trials up, because some of y'all may be, some people may be visual learners. Some may be just, hey, you can take it straight up out the book and get it. Okay? However, it's, it's my intent to demonstrate and present this before you in as clear as possible. So here we go again. The Lord repeated it again about the seventh day. And for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country, who called his own service and delivered unto them his goods. And one he gave five talents to another two, 
and another one unto every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. That's why the Lord said, Behold, I come quickly, for my reward is with me to give to every man according to his works. So whatever ability the Lord has given you in his ministry or in his world or by his business, that's what the Lord looking at. So here we go. Then he that had received five talents went and traded the same and made them other five talents. So he went and mingled with people. And, hey, look, the Lord said this and the Lord said that. And, hey, he found that they had a talent in the world or they had skills in the world. And, hey, look. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained other two. But notice, but he that had received one and digged in the earth, he hid his Lord's money. In other words, no, he's scared. I can't show him valuable to God. They said the Lord's money. What do you think is valuable to the Lord? His word. Amen. Okay? And watch this. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckon with them. Again, he said, I'll come quickly and my reward with you, with him, to give to every man as his what? Work shall be. So let's see how he rewards his service in the seventh day. So he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents saying, Lord, Thou delivers to me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou to the joy of thy Lord. Come into the side. Come into the Because the Lord said this should be a joyful day unto us. Amen. That's why we're going to be. The Lord going to say this is a marvelous thing when it hit. You're going to see. We're going to get there. All about the seven days. That's what we, and then we're going to transition to the eighth day. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou delivers to me two talents. I mean, you may not be a law, but you have them little two talents that you have, you, you use to the benefit of the kingdom of God. Watch what he does. Here. He said, and I gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou to the joy of thy Lord. So we're going to be ruling over cities and command a whole lot of stuff in this seventh day. We're going to look at some of the details in a minute. Then he which had received that one title, uh oh, and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man. Here we go. Assuming the Lord is all harsh and uh uh, no, nah, the Lord is gracious to all that will believe and come to him, y'all. He's gracious to all. But this guy had a different opinion about God. Notes. And rebuild what thou sowest not, and gathering what thou hast not sown. Straw. And I was afraid. They were that fearful thing. Amen. That will keep you out of the first resurrection. Yes. That will put you with the rest of the day. Okay? Now watch this. And when he had that talent in the earth, lo, there thou hast, that is thine. This Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. See? Being slothful about the Lord building and wicked. Lord, you ain't getting in. Because we're going to show you what's going to happen on the, the same seventh day. He's going to be teaching. Just like I'm teaching now, I'm practicing for what we're going to be doing when the seventh day gets here. Okay? Watch it. We're going to get there, y'all. We're going to get there. Thou art is therefore to have put my money to exchange it and then at my coming, because this represents the seventh day, y'all. I should have received in my own duty. Take therefore the title from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. For everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he had. And cast ye that unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what the eighth day represents. Because there's going to be some weeping and gnashing of teeth. We're going to look at that as we close out this lesson. As we go into the eighth day. So now let's go to Revelations. Uh, I'm sorry, Daniel 7 and 22. Continue looking in this, this uh, seventh day. Daniel 7 and 22. Back to the book of Daniels. And we're going to pick it up at 22. <clears throat> Daniel 7 and 22. I'm sorry, 21. Watch this. 21, 7 and 21. He said, And I beheld the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Notice how long this goes. Until the ancient of days came 
and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. We read that Revelation 20 or 4. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. That's why he said, enter thou to the joy of our Lord. Because he's going to give the saints the kingdom under the whole heaven. That's further down in this chapter. But watch how the Lord does this thing. Let's go to Zechariah 8 and 3. Zechariah 8, that's toward a little bit toward the back of the Old Testament. And you got Malachi. It's almost like to Matthews. Then you got Malachi. And then you got Zechariah. So that's like in the middle of the Bible almost. You got Malachi. <clears throat> then you got Zechariah. And then we go on to Zechariah 8 and 3. And let the Lord tell us what's going on in the seventh day too. Because judgment is given to the saints. He's giving them cities. The answer to the joy of the Lord. The rest breakers taken out. Satan is bound. He won't be released until after this day. Just like right now. Satan is loosed after the Sabbath day. How I know that? Go pick a hundred church tomorrow, y'all. I find so much confusion. So many different denominations. The same thing is being played out in our lives in this side or in this dispensation. Let me say that. In this dispensation. Is setting this up for what's going to be happening in the next dispensation, y'all. Okay? When Christ is actually here reigning, and we have the first resurrection saints that have become God, and they're reigning over cities. That's a totally different dispensation that we are in right now. Okay? And watch how the Lord speaks to this thing. Zechariah 8 and 3. Thus said the Lord, I am returned unto Zion. And I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. It ain't that. It ain't that now, y'all. Notice, he said, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Notice, he said, thus said the Lord of hosts, there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. We're going to see how old you can be under this dispensation that the Lord is bringing for the thousand year reign of Christ. After the first resurrection. Watch this. He said, The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets. That's what's going to be going on when this time comes, when this seven day get here, this day of rest. That's what we're looking forward to. And he said, Boys and girls are going to be playing in the streets thereof. Notice, thus said the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of his people in these days, because we in the sixth day, y'all, we ain't got to the seventh day. He said, look, should it also be marvelous in my eyes, said the Lord? Because he said, thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. So this is what we got to look forward to in the seventh day, in truth and in righteousness. Now, um... Let's get down to verse 13. The Lord got a lot in this war about the seven day. Especially about his people. Verse 13. Skip down to verse 13. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, and we are, go come to some of them black neighborhoods at night. You try that. Some of us are so bad, and our neighbors are so bad, it's bad in the daytime. Anyway, because he said, it said, kind of pass that as you were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and you shall be a blessing. Because we read in part one how the Lord will give us rest from our bondage, from my anguish, for look at the stuff. Oh, anyway, I don't look, He's going to give us rest from that foolishness by making us a blessing. And He said, Fear not, but let your hands be strong. For thus said the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, and our fathers laugh, said the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. Notice he said, so again have I thought in these days, what are these days? Days of a thousand years, reign of Christ. To do well in Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, to the house of Judah, fear ye not. So now let's get down to verse 23, because this is what's going to be happening in the seventh day. They ain't doing this now, but when the seventh day get here, Watch this. Verse 23. Thus said the Lord of hosts, <clears throat> In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, 
we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. This is the seven-day scripture. You're going to be taking hold of the so-called Negro, so-called Afro-American. He ain't going to be called that during the seventh day, y'all. But instead, they're going to be saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So now, let's keep going. Let's go to Michael 4th chapter and see what's happening in this, furthermore, happening in the seventh day. Michael 4 and 1. So we had Malachi. So if you back up, you're going to see before Malachi, Zechariah, you see Haggai, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Nehem, and then you're going to see Malachi. Sorry, Michael. My bad, Michael. That's where we go. Michael. The book of Michael. Fourth chapter and verse 1. This is talking about what's happening in the seventh day. Michael 7, sorry, 4 and 1. Michael 4 and verse 1. Because the rest break up into a guy. He been bound for a whole day or a thousand years to God. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountains of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the people shall flow into it. Notice. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the house of the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. <clears throat> and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for the Lord shall go forth from heaven. No. Because the Lord is here, reigning on the earth. And he's in Zion. That's why he said, and we would, he would teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for the Lord shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. This is what the seven days is about. That's why he said, in the last days. Because you got the last day of man's work, you got the last day of the week, and that which represents the saints of God that keep this day as a Sabbath, but guess what? Uh, then you got the last day, which is the eighth day. Again, that's talking about the last days, because we got the last days of man. Because death is in the creation up to the eighth day. We're going to see that. I want to state that. And we're going to see something uh, shortly. But focusing on this day, they're going to come up, they're going to be getting taught. That's why the Lord's Sabbath day represents teaching God's people. That's why he said they said teach, and we should walk in his paths, for the Lord should go forth for Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. See? So now watch this, verse 3. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That's because, that's because the reign of Christ is here for a thousand years. They're not going to be learning war. He said, But they shall sit any man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts have spoken it. That's why on the tenth day the Jubilee goes sound in this on the day of affliction. Guess what? Every man gonna be doing this. Cause they're gonna be gonna confess. Guess what? Our fathers had inherited lives and things where there's no profit. That's Jeremiah 16 and 19. So that's why I said what said what's what 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 verse 5 says. For all people will walk everyone in the name of his God. Because you will have God reigning all over these different cities. But notice and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Then it says, In that day said the Lord, I will send a herd that was halted, I will gather a herd that is driven out, and herd that I have afflicted. And I'll make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast afar off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in heaven. Hmm, you don't say that, do it. That ain't what you read. I said that, but that ain't what you read that now. So I'm going to say what well, we read, y'all. Watch this. And the Lord shall reign over there in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. Because he's going to be here on this earth. A thousand years reign of Christ. He's giving you not judgment. He's giving the saints judgment to rule over cities and nations and people and teaching as priests and God. And guess what? Watch this, y'all. Let's keep it pushing. Let's go to Isaiah uh, 26 chapter. Isaiah 26. And eight. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Isaiah 65, my bad. Isaiah 65 and 17. Let's look at what's furthermore going. Then we're going to look at some of the apostles' jobs, y'all. Isaiah 65 
and uh, 17. Because he told them what they're going to be doing in the regeneration when he comes back. He told them what they're going to be doing. Isaiah 65, and we start at verse 17. Isaiah 65 and verse 17. You know how there is after Solomon, <clears throat> but that book is before Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 65 and verse 17. Now watch this. He says, For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Now why is he saying there's new heaven and new earth? First of all, the kingdom of men has been taken down. The next thing that's going to make a new heaven and a new earth is once, guess what? When we go to Jerusalem, like we read last week, you're going to see the men that transgress against God, the uh, 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 false prophet and the beast, that work miracles, or the first that work miracles before the beast, they're going to be burning in the lake of fire. Don't nobody see nobody burning in the lake of fire now. But when the Lord set this up, like we read last week, it's definitely going to be a new earth. Number three, the kingdom of this world become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And the other thing that's going to happen, you're going to have gods all around the earth reigning over cities. And heaven ain't going to look like what we think now. Because it's going to be God here on earth. And we're going to be seeing God. And we're going to see, it's going to tell you, look what else is happening here. This is why he called it the new earth. But ye shall be glad, notice, and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. That's why he told the servants, enter down to the joy of the Lord. Look at this. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. That's why they got the iron shield over there in Jerusalem now. Y'all want to miss it? They know they come inside. You know, the whole ruckus about us moving our capital over to Jerusalem, causing a whole lot of ruckus over there, y'all. But when the seven day get here, they ain't, uh-uh, no. Look, so now he says, uh, Verse 20, but there shall be a this. Now watch this, y'all. Look what happens. This is why he called a new heaven and a new earth. Watch this. This is amazing what God is telling his servants to look for in the seventh day. There shall be no more of this, the infant of days, nor old man that hath not fulfilled his days. For the child should die a hundred years old. A child. And we look and see somebody that make what? 89, 90. But he said, a child should die at a hundred years old. Notice, but the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be a curse. And the Lord giving you a hundred years to deal with the teachings of God. A hundred years. And we're going to look at what the teachers, we're going to see our teachers. See, that's why it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. You don't see your teachers now. Not, and the ones that really teach the word of God, they are we in the corner, y'all. Or oh, they don't do nobody like us. They're like, man, we, oh man, brother Jacob, he, no, you don't pay attention to him. He crazy. All right. When it's come, teachers ain't gonna be here. We're gonna see it. We're gonna read it. Notice what he said. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be cursed with me. Which means you got a hundred years to get it right with God. hundred years. So people gonna be living way longer than they are now. Then it says, and they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build in another habit. They shall not plant in another heap. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. He said the days of a tree is how long life goes. That's how it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And notice, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And why it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. So we're going to be standing before the Lord going to be right. God going to be right in your face. He's going to be right here on this earth. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Notice this. Here's the key. And the, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like a bullock. And a dust shall be the serpents mean they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, said the Lord. That's why at the close of the sixth day, the Lord, we read that 
Revelation 19 chapter, he had all the fowls of the air come and eat all the people that he slain. The soldiers and all the people that came up against Jerusalem, that whole Armageddon thing. Yeah, he cleaned that out. Okay, we're going to read a little bit more about all of that too. But uh, some of that burying is going on in the seventh day. But uh, 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 let's go to Isaiah uh, 30 chapter. Isaiah, back up to Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30 and, and 19. Why is he saying they're going to yet speak? Why are they yet speaking? I'm going to answer. Watch this. Isaiah 30 and verse 19. This is what we have to look for. This is what's happening during the Sabbath day. We're ruling as kings and priests of God, giving cities to reign over. The lambs going to be, be able to walk in, in, uh, 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 with a wolf. Ain't going to be eating. No, ain't going to be none of that during the seventh day, y'all. Watch this, y'all. But Isaiah 30 and 19. Notice what it says. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. Because Satan been bound for a thousand years. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. Watch this. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, because that's what we got now. Woo. Especially in our neighborhood. Ugh. I'm going to talk about that. And notice, in the water of affliction, we got a lot of that. He said, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Why? Because the priest of God, the, the one that died and came up in that first resurrection, that observed the Lord's Sabbath day and kept his commandments, his laws, and his statutes, been raised up. Now, it's, the teachers are here. You're going to be able to see them. He said, your teachers should not be moved into the corners anymore. You know, what about no denominations or religions and whether well, should I be Baptist or should I be Episcopalian or Lutheran? No, none of that. That's how you get the beast and the false prophet burning in the lake of fire. No, he says, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Could you imagine that? You get ready to do something wrong. Brother, this is not good. This is the way you walk in. You get insistence during the thousand years. That's why he said, a sinner shall be accursed at a hundred years old. Why? Because you got the teachers right there. Thy, eye, thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. That's how it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Because we know ain't nothing like that going on right now. This is during the thousand year of the reign of Christ. This is why he's giving judgment to the saints. Because we the ones that's going to be telling people, look, brother, this is the way walk ye in it. Or when you turn to the right hand, when you turn to the left. Notice he says, ye shall defile also the coverings of the graven images of silver and ornaments of thy molten graven images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth, just to say unto it, get thee hence. So we're going to put in the way garbage. We're going to all of that because our teachers are right there. <coughs> Reigning with Christ on the earth. Then shall he give the rain of thy seed, and thou shalt sow the ground wherewith the bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous. In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. So this is great Need to be looking forward to during the seventh day. But look, Let's go to Romans, uh, 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 why he got to tell him to walk therein. Let's go to Isaiah 26, y'all. Isaiah 26 and 8. Because you're going to have flesh, because you can read. He said, you're going to have flesh come. We read it last week. All flesh is going to come worship before the Lord in Jerusalem. They're going to have representatives coming up to Jerusalem. The word should go forth from Zion. We read many people going to say, let us go up to Jerusalem. Didn't we? we read that. But yet, during the seventh day, guess what? You still got death in the creation. But death is going up all the way into the eighth day. Let me put on this chapter right on, on point here. That's what the purpose of this little dot is. This little line right here, this represents death. That's why he said a sinner should be accursed at 100 years old, which means people, flesh and blood, still in the seventh day. And it's going all the way into the eighth day. And this is where the changeover happens. This is when the Lord takes death out of the picture as we know it, period. And you get that second death. So why are we... Why is the Lord saying, you got to tell him, uh, brother, this is the way to walk there in? Because of this. Isaiah 26 and 8. 
I've got 26 and 8. Because during the thousand years, the Lord will have his teachers telling the people, hey, this is how you do this. That's how you do it. Learn, sit down. We'll show up on the Sabbath day. I'm going to teach you, show you all the things that you're supposed to do. That's why he said a child should die at a hundred. And a sinner shall be a curse at a hundred, though. I mean, all that good teaching going to be going on. I said they're gonna they should learn war no more. They're gonna be taught. They said go and let us teach us of thy way. So all this teaching, because this is what the Sabbath day actually represents, being taught about God. That's why we do it now. So that when we come up in our first resurrection, hey, this book is second nature to you. You looking like, hey, look, it's like you just kept scapping. So well, guess what? Instead of you worrying about when you're gonna die, you like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, because I changed the body. You know, my leg was broke. Or my hair was short, or I had no hair, or I was aged. Hey, let's keep it pushing. Hey, remember God. That's why he said this in 26 and verse uh, 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 8. He said, yeah, in the way of judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, and believe you me, we desire God. We would, everybody, like Paul said, I wish I was with Christ. Hey, we desired it. We wish we was with the Lord right now, but everything in its time. We haven't reached the end of the sixth day, and we haven't come to the point where the Lord come back after that trumpet is sound. Notice, he said, with my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yeah, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, that's why the Lord said, you ain't gonna, your teachers ain't going to be no more in the corners. You ain't got to worry about what, what did the Lord say. No, his judgments will be in the earth. That's why he gave judgment to his saints. Because we're going to have the kingdom under the whole heaven. Now we're reigning with Christ. And the word of the Lord is coming forth from Jerusalem all over the globe. That's when his judgments are going to be in the earth. No, see, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Now watch this. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness, will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. So even during a thousand years, that's why the Lord said, the sinner shall be accursed at a hundred. And why is this so? Because death is still in the picture, the first death. And we still got flesh and blood people walking around. Even Paul is in with what goes on, even with a servant of God, even to this day. Let's go to Romans 7 chapter. Romans 7 and 14. Even though they seen all the nations took down, all of that, guess what? Still got this flesh and blood body that's going to still be in the seventh day. Flesh and blood people walking around here. But the teacher's going to be right there. The first resurrection doesn't occur. Yet, this is what happens with man even to this day. Romans 7 and verse 14. Because see, when we get into the seventh day, we're going to know that everybody's going to know this. What we're going to read. Right now, only those of us that keep the Sabbath day and study the word, we know this. But the whole world, his judgment's going to be known. The whole world going to know what we're going to read right now. For we know that the law is spiritual. But notice, but I am carnal, soul under sin. So sin is still present in the seventh day. That's why he said, the sinner shall be accursed at a hundred. That's why it's called a new heaven and a new earth. Because right now, he, the Lord ain't giving no pass till you get to a hundred years old. Right now, you serve to drop dead at any minute. Okay? Some of us didn't make it past last night. Somebody might not make it past tonight. But during the thousand years, he said, a sinner will be cursed at a hundred. A child should die at a hundred years old. Just imagine that. That's, whew. So that's what we got to look for in the seventh day. Yet, death is still there. Yet, he said, I am carnal, sold under sin. Now watch this. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. That's why you need to teach us there during the thousand year reign of Christ to teach the people the word of the Lord. That's why it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. The teacher's going to be plainly known because the first resurrection came up. So now let's look at uh, Ezekiel 45 and 17 because there's going to be sin offerings going on. That's why he said, we should be priests of God. What you think you need priests for? Well, right here, Isaiah 45 and uh, 
sorry, sorry, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 45, my bad, Ezekiel 45 and 17. Because I used to wonder, why the Lord send the Levitical priesthood back up when he come back? Well, we just got through reading because you still got people, they're going to know the law of the Spirit, yet they can't on sold on the sin. So we need sin offerings for the flesh and blood people. Not for God, but for the flesh and blood. And this is what's going on, y'all. Uh, Ezekiel 45 and we're going to go right because there's a lot in here. I want to keep you pushing as we transition into the eighth day. He said, and all the people of the, sorry, 16, all the people of the land shall give this oblation for the prince in Israel. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feast and in the new moons, notice, and in the Sabbaths and all the solemnities of the house of Israel, he should prepare the sin offering. Why do you need sin offerings, y'all? Our people still going to be committing sin. But they got to 100 years. Oh, it gets straight. Notice, and meat offerings and burnt offerings and peace offerings to make reconciliations for the house of Israel. Notice, thus said the Lord God, because this is during the seventh day, y'all. Notice, because this is under the thousand year dispensation of Christ reigning on the earth with the saints that he had just given them judgment. Now look, thus said the Lord God, in the first month, in the first day of the month, thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish and cleanse his sanctuary, and the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offer, okay, and put it upon the post of the house and upon the four corners and the center of the altar and upon the post of the gates of the inner court. And notice, so thou shalt, <clears throat> so, sorry, and so thou shalt do, uh, do the seventh day of the month, notice, for everyone that erreth and for him that is simple, so shall you reconcile the house. Because even while God is reigning, that's why you got the teachers going around and God telling them, look, brother, this is not the way. Hey, this is the way. Walk there in. We're going to be ruling. And the priest that God going to set up in that's flesh and blood will be making these offerings for everyone that erreth and for him that uh, uh, is simple. That's why we read in part one, Isaiah 6, 6, 15, he said, take up them for priests and for Levites. Because he's setting it back up. But they're going to do it in righteousness. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. So now let's, let's go on to uh, uh, Ezekiel 20th chapter. Because I want to bring in an element here. Uh, because see, at the close of the sixth day, the Lord going to be bringing his church into the wilderness. And they're going to get that change at the first resurrection. Okay? But this is happening at the opening of the seventh day, God setting up his kingdom. He's processing the children of Israel through the wilderness. Let's go to Ezekiel 20, 20 and uh, 33. That's part of this, what's happening in the seventh day. You're going to process these priests first, y'all. Get them in the land. They're going to be cleaned up. And look how he processing them. Ezekiel 20 and 33. Watch this. As I live, said the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with free report out will I rule over you. I'm oh, sorry, but that's Ezekiel 20 and 33. That's what I meant. Ezekiel 20 and 33. Watch this, y'all. Because Israel, we some stiff necked hard haired people, y'all. <laughs> you me. The Lord got to come down like that. Look, and I'm going to bring you out from the people and we gather you out of the countries where you are scattered. With a mighty hand and with stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Watch this. That's why when the Lord comes with fire, look, it's gonna be furious. And when the Lord knock out, not bound Satan up, the king of Babylon ceased, and he took out the heathen that control, uh, was in control with wrath and contingent, uh, uh, the false prophet rather, and the beast and the false prophet, and let the fire. Look, look what he said, verse. Uh, 35. I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. Men and Lord going to be right there in the wilderness doing this every day. Notice, like as I played with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. That's why the uh, unleavened bread is so important. Because like the Lord brought our forefathers out the first time, guess what? He's going to bring physical Israel back the same route. They're going get, to get processed through the wilderness. This is during the seventh day. 
And notice, he says, so will I plead with you, said the Lord God. Let me read that one more time. Like as I pled with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, said the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Because when the Lord set up the new covenant uh, in, in uh, 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 <clears throat> with the Passover, when he came and shed his blood, guess what? All 12 tribes were present in the land. He had 12 disciples. Because he was opening it up to Melchizedek priesthood so that we come under that priesthood during the dispensation that we're in now. So that when he comes back, now he bring them in the bond of the covenant. They're going to do what they're supposed to do and all that the Lord has said. And look what he, look what he said in verse 38. I will purge out from among you the rebels. Yes, sir. And them that transgress against me, I will bring them forth out of the countries they, where they sojourn, and they shall not enter to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So he purged them out the earth. Because them that don't believe, he ain't going to raise them up until a thousand years later. That's why he said the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years are finished. That's why he bound Satan up. You know Satan a rebel. Everybody <laughs> know that. He ain't getting in until the dead rest. And these right here, that's Israel that's, that know it. Because you won't have Israel that's going to survive to get to the wilderness, but they're not going to get into the land. So now, let's look at the apostles' job try right quick, y'all. Let's move on to the apostles' job. Let's go to Matthew 19 and 28. Another element of the seventh day. Let's look at the apostles' jobs. Because when we read last week in Revelation 19 chapter, it said he's called Lord of Lord and what? King of Kings. So watch this. Matthew 19. Matthew 19 and 28. Look what he told his apostles. But Peter had asked the question, Lord, we have forsaken all and following you. What do we have? What we got coming, Lord, for forsaking everybody else and following you? What we got coming? Watch this. And Jesus said unto them, verse 28, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, because that's the definition of a Christian, really, that's really what it is. Only reason we put Bible on it because you got Christians running around as booklets. So we have to make a distinction. We're going to give you the Bible. That's all we say, Bible Christians. Because we follow what the Bible says. Not what Brother Jacob think or child please. Anyway, so it says here, Ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Didn't he say he's going to get the saints judgment? The saints are given to the, uh, 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 he said, I saw thrones, and judgment was given unto them. Then Paul said the same. No, you're not that the saints shall judge the world. But guess what? The apostles are going to be ruling over the 12 tribes of Israel sitting on 12 thrones for each tribe. Now, uh, 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 let's go and take a look at this a little closer. Let's go to Ezekiel 47 and 13. Because the Lord is going to break the land down. He's going to break these 12 tribes down. And watch this, Ezekiel 47 and verse 13. Ezekiel 47 and verse 13. So we're going to get closer to the end of the seventh day and show you what happens going to happen. Transition to that eighth day. Watch this, Ezekiel 47 and 13. Remember, he told the apostles in the regeneration, you're going to be reigning over the 12 tribes of Israel, sitting on 12 thrones. That's why Jesus is going to call king of kings. And we're going to see that he's going to be king of David, and David's going to be reigning over this. Watch this. We'll see in a minute. Notice, this is verse 13. That's where we at, verse 13. Why did he say 12 tribes? Because they on the earth. God's dispensation of reigning on the earth is in full effect. Watch what he said. Thus said the Lord God, this shall be the border whereby ye shall inherit the land according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions, and ye shall inherit it, one as well as another, concerning that which I lift up my hand to give unto your fathers, and this land shall fall unto you for inheritance. And this shall be the border of the land toward the north side, and the great sea, the way of Hephron, 
and men to go to Zildad, Hamath, Berathoth, Sevaram, which is between the border of Damascus and the border of Hamath, Hazarath, Kong, sorry, which is by the coast of Haran, or Huran. Notice, and the border from the sea shall be Hezarenanan, and the border of Damascus, and the north, northward, and the border of Hamath, and this is the north side. Now, I want to skip down uh, to verse uh, 21, because he's dropped a lot of tribes in here that are coming to Israel. Now, watch this. And so shall you divide this land according to the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for inheritance unto you. And notice, and to the stranger. Notice, he said, to the strangers, rather, that sojourn among you, which shall beget children among you. They shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. They shall have an inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. So now let's go to, uh, uh, sorry. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger sojourneth, there shall you give him his inheritance, said the Lord God. This was the righteousness that's going to be going on during a thousand years. Like I said, I think maybe Judah, Benjamin, and Levi is over this way. So... However, whoever the strangers joined them on, whatever, whatever camp that is that they, they died in and they kept the word of God, that's what they're going to, that's what their offspring is going to be dealing with when they get over there in the land. So now let's go to uh, Ezekiel 48, 48 and 30. Ezekiel 48 and 30. And these are the goings. These are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,500 mentioned. The gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Judah, one gate of Levi. And on the east side, 4,500 and three gates, and one gate of Joseph, and one gate of Benjamin, and one gate of Dan. And at the south side, 4,500 measures. And three gates, one gate of Simeon, one gate of Issachar, one gate of Zebulon. At the west side, 4,500 with three gates, one gate of Gad, one gate of Asher, one gate of Naphtali. Watch this. And it, it was said, it was round about 18,000 measures. And the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. Why is it saying the Lord is there? Let's go to Jeremiah 3.15, y'all. Jeremiah 3, 15. And then we're going to about to get ready to get into the transition to the eighth day. This is what's going on for a thousand years, y'all. Strange is going to be right there. That's a John among part of Israel. And then all the people that's coming up, they're going, the strange is going to be right there with Israel. That's what we read. The ones born in the land, Israel, he's going to be as Israel. That's why I have a problem with people talking about the Gentile can't teach this book. Child, please. Once he becomes a graduate, He's been certified. Look, the blood, like I said, the blood of Jesus. Don't discriminate. Okay? So right here, Jeremiah 3, and start at verse 15. Why is it called the city? Said the city, the Lord is there. And remember, Jesus said when he comes to sit on the throne of his glory, this is the throne of the glory of the Lord. 3, Matthew, sorry, Jeremiah 3, and we're going to start at 15. And I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. These are the things that ministers that the Lord have sent. They feed you this stuff. They show you. Guess what, y'all? This is what we got to look forward inside this other day. This is the knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3, 315. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 315. These are the things that the Lord said his pastors right now so that his people, the people of God, is looking forward in the seventh day. This is what's going to get you there. Because he said, I'll give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's why the book says wisdom is a principal thing, but with all your giving, get what? A understanding. That's what I'm trying the best I can, y'all. If I got these charts out here, because I'm trying to give you knowledge and understanding, not opinions. Not what I think or what I felt. Because that ain't going to get you in the uh, seven days. That might get you in the lake of fire. And me too. So we got to adhere to this book. Anyway, and notice what he says. 
And it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, said the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they be remembered, neither shall they visit it, neither shall they be done anymore. Why? Because the teachers are right here. Back on the Lord's Sabbath, that's when his teachers stand up and they show you this stuff. So that when this thousand years get here, the seventh day, that's in the creation land for man. Look what he said. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. And all nations shall be gathered unto it. Because they flesh and it's going to be flesh and blood people still here, y'all. Okay? All nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to heaven. They said that, did it? It said to Jerusalem, neither shall they want any more after the imagination of the evil hearts. That's why the Lord closed it out at the sixth day. He took out the evil of the evil men that was promoting the imagination of men's hearts. That's why they in the lake of fire, all during that seventh day. Okay? Notice verse 18. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for inheritance to your fathers. But I said, How should I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land? A goodly heritage of the host of nations? Notice he said, I said, Thou shalt call me Father, and shall not turn away from me. This is what's going to be happening through a thousand years. That Jesus is here on the earth with his people. And let's go to uh, look at who else is here, y'all. Let's go to Ezekiel 37 21. Back to the book of Ezekiel 37 and 21. Watch this, Ezekiel 37 and 21. Notice he says, Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, because that's where we are. We ain't in the land now, y'all. When the Lord closed out that sixth day, you're going to remove the Jewish people out of the land. Because, you know, like I said, Jewish, they wish they were Jews. That's why they call Jewish. Anyway, he said, to, thus said the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. They ain't going to be migrating, y'all. The Lord God going to take us from them. Notice, whether they be gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land, we'll be a process through that wilderness. Because on that, on before the trumpet sound, his church had to go to the wilderness. They got to change. Now he got to bring his people through the wilderness to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And there shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. That's what we, this is the dispensation we're living in now. The controversial over Zion. Okay? Notice, neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them so that they shall be my people and I will be their God. And this is how we know this seventh day. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. That's how Jesus is called king of what? Kings and lord of Lord. Mm. So now David, my servant, shall be king over them and they shall have one shepherd and they also shall walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. That's why when the Lord come back, he said the Levitical priesthood, now they're going to be doing it in righteousness. Because like I read earlier, you still got sinners. Because the sinner got to 100 years old. I wish I did have a, to 100 to get it right. Anyway, today, anyway, shall I please? Notice, he said, and they shall dwell in the land that I give unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. That's how we know it's a new, new, uh, a new heaven and a new earth. Because the Son of God, God is here on this earth. Okay? So now let's go quickly to Isaiah. Sorry. Let's go in the same Ezekiel. To Ezekiel 43 and look at what's happening in the seventh day. Then we get ready to transition over to the eighth day, y'all. Ezekiel 43 and 1. 
And we're going to transition over to the eighth day. All these wonderful things is going on in the seventh day, y'all. During the seventh day. Notice he says, afterward he brought me, in verse 1, afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looked toward the east. Behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Why is it shining with his glory, the earth? Because guess what? We being partakers of Christ, we're going to have our vile body, bodies changed over like his glorious body. So the whole, you have God everywhere. So the earth going to have the glory of God shining on it. Okay, because at this time, God going to be plural, not just one, or rather two. Okay, notice, and it's according to the appearance of the vision, which I saw even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city, and the visions were like the vision, and I saw by the river Chabah, and I fell upon my face. Now, let's get down to verse 7, because I want to get ready to get into that transition to the eighth day to close out this lesson. Verse 7, he said to me, Son of man, the place of my throne, and the place of the soles of my feet. This is Jesus talking. Let me say, when I come and sit on the throne of my glory, this is Jesus talking. The place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever, and my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither by their kings, by their hoarding, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. Because he told you about that in Psalms 133, verse 11 through 14. You want to be sitting on this throne. You want to be partaker of what he said, the place of my feet, because he's going to be on this earth. In the setting of their threshold by my threshold, and their post by my post, and wall between me and them, they have even defiled my holy name by their abomination that they have committed. Wherefore, I have consumed them in my anger. That's what's wrong with the black community tonight. It's the anger of the Lord that's fleshing us out into all manner of hurt and harm and danger. Call it the anger of the Lord. He said, now let them put away their whoredoms and the carcasses of their kings far from me. And notice, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. So now, let's get ready to get into the uh, transition of the uh, uh, eighth day. Uh, let's go to Revelation 20th chapter. Now we're going into Revelation 20th chapter and we're going to go and look at what's going to happen after a thousand years. And then we're going to look at this transition, how the Lord is going to bring it into that. Revelation 20. And this time, we're going to start at Revelation 20 and verse 6. Now, we read up earlier in verses 1 through 5. It's to tell you how Satan is going to be loose after the thousand years. Like I said, Psalms. 90 or 4, 2 Peter 3 and 8 tells us a thousand years to the Lord is one day, and one day to the Lord is a thousand years. So we're going to read verse 6, and we're going to go down, and then we're going to go into the eighth day. He said, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God, and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now I just want to make sure I nail this in the head, so let's go hold this spot and go to Revelation 5 and 9. Revelation 5 and 9. Because this is what the blood of Jesus did for us. And this is what Jesus did for us on the wave offering. Right here. Revelation 5 and 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every country and tongue and people and nations. See, the blood of Jesus is, is, does not discriminate, y'all. Okay? So he said he redeems by his blood out of every country and tongue. I ain't got to learn no Hebrew, y'all. Child, please. Anyway, and people and nations. Like I said, it ain't discriminative. There's no discrimination with his blood. And notice what he said about us that are redeemed by the blood. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. Now we see why Jesus is called Lord and Lord, and then David is going to be king over the apostles, and the apostles are going to be kings sitting on thrones, ruling over 12 tribes, and the Lord is going to be giving us cities all over this world. Because the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to who? The saints of the Most High. 
And notice what he says. He had made us dark God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So now let's go back to Revelation, the 20th chapter, and we're going to transition into the eighth day. We're going to transition into the eighth day, verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, so now I want to go to this chart. So when this thousand years has expired, which you notice is up on the twelfth day of the creation, the days of heaven, according to Daniel 11, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 11 and 21, Psalm 89 and 29. That's why Israel is so important. That's why it's ruling from Jerusalem. So once this day has expired, once the thousand years has expired, now we're going into what? The eighth day. Because everyone that didn't believe, they don't, man, what, God, what? I got my rabbits in my ears and my Santa Claus. All right? So the rest of the day, now here they come. So now let's go and read what happens. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So now we have just crossed over to the eighth day. And notice what happens in this eighth day. Because this is why I got this big arrow on there. Satan going to do the same thing he did in the eighth day that he did on man's first day. When Adam and Eve were deceived, it was this, they were deceived on our first day. In the Garden of Eden, Satan deceived him. So, guess what? Eight days later, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to come out to deceive him. And he's only playing out the plan that God set up from the beginning. Because if you don't believe in keeping the commands of God, you are deceived. And you're going to end up being part of that rest of the day that come up in the eighth day. So that's why I got this arrow here because it's a repeat. Because Satan deceived us in the first day. Our father and mother, Adam and Eve. All right, he did see Eve, which got to Adam. I'm stay with the book, see. So he gonna, it's going to be a second deception. Judgment came on us the first day. So now, guess what, y'all? Judgment coming again to the second death. That's why we read on such <clears throat> The second death has no power. When did we come in the first death, y'all? Day one. And we've all been sentenced to that every since, every last one of us. Now we're coming into the eighth day. Now we're going to see what happens in the eighth day, after the seventh day. We're looking at what happens after the seventh day by going to verse 8. And, it shall, and he shall, <clears throat> this is what Satan doing. He shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. Oh, so now we see him flesh and blood in the eighth day. Because that's, that is flesh and blood, y'all, okay? To gather them together to battle. Oh, there's a war. Now we got see the rest breakers got took out. That's why there was no war in the seventh day. Now we in the eighth day. Now here comes the last battle in the last day. This is the absolute last day. This is where the changeover occurred. Now we're gonna see what kind of changeover y'all. Okay? So he going out to see God and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is the as the sand of the sea. So you got some. That they, they, they fall under this, even though the Lord has showed them righteousness, they're going to allow Satan to deceive them like he did up mother and father up to Eve on the first day. So now, look, it's saying they went up on the breath of the earth and could pass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Then the Lord said, Blessed are they that do this camp. They let me have a right to the city. So now, we in the eighth day, now those that didn't one key God's command. Now they're coming against the beloved sin. But look, let's go look in detail at this. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 38 and 1. We're going to go to Ezekiel 38 and 1. Look at this. Ezekiel 38 and 1. We're in the eighth day now. Their rest is over. The, the rest breaker been loose now, y'all. He been made loose. He went deceived. And watch what the Lord said in Ezekiel 38. Now between Ezekiel 38 and 39, we got the Lord bouncing back between the sixth day and the eighth day. Sixth day, eighth day. It's events that reflect the end of the sixth day, and there's events that reflect what's happening in the eighth day. Here's what's happening in the eighth day, y'all. <clears throat> Ezekiel 38 and 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God in the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, and all of them handling swords. 
Persia, Ethiopian, Libyan, with all of them, with shields, Gomar, and all his hands in the house of Togomar, of the north quarters, and all the bands with many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare thyself thou, and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be a, a guard unto them. After many days, notice, that said he visited in the latter years. In the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Notice, and is gathered out of many peoples against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nation, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Notice, thou shalt sin and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and, and all thy bands and many peoples with thee. Even though the Lord has been teaching for a thousand years, Satan came out and then fell in the same trip bag that Eve fell in. Now look at what it said. Thus said the Lord God, it shall come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought. Why is he saying they're thinking an evil thought? Because guess what? Satan been loosed. Now he's a set of deceptions and deceivings that went out to deceive the nations. And he said, at that same time, things shall come into thy mind. Who's bringing these things, y'all? Now, he said, thou shalt think an evil thought, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest. We, did we read that? After the five years, they go on to the camp of the city, the beloved city, the camp of the saints. Now, we at now he said, you know, to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil, to take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places, that are now inhabited upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. But look, I'm going to skip down to verse 14. He says, Thou son of man, prophesy and say to God, Thus said the Lord God, In that day when my people dwell safely, shall thou not know it? Yet they know. Because the Lord been teaching for a thousand years. They know. But notice now, and thou shalt come from the place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, and a great company, and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel, as the cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. No, it's not he in the latter days, because he's breaking it down. Because a thousand years, these are a thousand years, these are the latter years. Now we get into the latter days, because guess what? Because that great white throne, here come when the Lord going to take him out. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel. And the cloud that covered the land, it shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me when I shall sanctify thee, O God, before their eyes. Notice, thus said the Lord God, Art thou he whom I have spoken of in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I shall bring thee against them? Notice, and it shall come to pass at that time when God shall come against the land of Israel, said the Lord God, that fury shall come up in my face. So now let's go to Revelation 20. Back to Revelation 20th chapter. We almost done, y'all. Going to Revelation 20. And watch this fury that's coming. Revelation 20 and. And now, we're going to read that again. We read it. Because he said, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and could pass the camp of the saints because they was at rest. Okay? The, about the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And notice, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Because the beast and the false prophet got there when the Lord came down took out the armies at the end of Armageddon. To open up the seventh day. Now Satan, now Satan, now he joined in the beast of the false prophet. Okay, over a thousand years later. And then notice, it says, and I saw a great white throne. Oh, here go the great white throne, y'all. This is after the thousand years. This is after the seventh day. Now we're here. And watch this. And, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Hold this part, and I want to show you real quick. Let's go, who is this? Who is this talking about? Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. 
Because at this point, Satan remember he been now he throwed in the lake of fire straight up. Remember, he was down for a thousand years. Then he came out to deceive people. Then he got eventually thrown in the lake of fire with the beast and the false prophets. We read that. I did not uh, uh philosophize that. We read that. But look, 2 Corinthians 5 and 12. Because Paul knows this. And see, we all gonna be standing here, y'all. But it all depends on which side of the ledger line you're gonna be on. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Watch this, y'all. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. See, that's when the rest of the dead come up in the eighth day. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, that's going to be a dead terror. Mm -hmm. That's why the Feast of Living, a Feast of Tabernacles for seven days, which represent the presence of God, and we rejoice over the fire for seven days. But when that eight day fire comes, whoo, it's going to be a scary thing, y'all. We're going to look how scary it's going to be. Notice. He said, for persuading men, we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. So you want to be a part of the rest of that day, get down with the commandments of God. Get that down pat in you. So should you die before the Lord strike, hey, you coming up, work in book, because that's what you went in the grave with, work in book. Because we're going to go back. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to rather, I almost left this out. Because why did he say we all should stand? Let's go to John 5 and 28. This is an eighth day verse right here. I used to think this was only the seventh day, but I was like, whoa. Because I can read you where there's a resurrection of the just. That's why you got the first resurrection. But this is the general resurrection here. Matthew, sorry, John 5 and verse 28. Matthew 5, sorry, St. John 5 and 28. This is St. John 5. After I need to start at uh, 22 and then skip down. Watch this, y'all. But the Father judges no man, but had committed all judgment unto the Son. So the Lord done gave us judgment. So he done passed judgment on us. So we already direct, came up in the first resurrection. Now the rest, everybody else got to come up, y'all. And they ain't coming up in the seventh day. They come up in that eighth day. And watch this. Let's skip down to verse 28. Watch this. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Now this is everybody. Remember we talked about the rest of the dead? So everybody that's dead at the point of the eighth day is who this is talking about. And watch this. And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. That's why it's called judgment, y'all. Who has done good at this point? Who's going to be found worthy in the eighth day? Then notice he says, and then have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Why can I say that? Why am I emphasizing that? Let's go back to Revelation 20th chapter. Oh, no, no, sorry. Revel uh, Luke 11 chapter. We're going to Luke 11. Luke 11 and 27. I just want to skip down. I'm kind of pushing on my time. So we're going to skip down to verse uh, 30. Luke 11 and 30. Because watch this. Because everybody ain't coming up in that first resurrection. But watch this. As far as Jonah was a sign unto the Nimites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Behold, a greater than Solomon is here. That's Jesus. And the men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So now let's go ahead and go into that uh, Revelation 20th chapter. And start at verse 12. Revelation 20 and verse 12. Well, this is when the judgment is coming up, y'all. Matter of fact, to back that up, let's go to 2 Peter 2 and 4. 2 Peter 2, sorry. Sorry, before I go back to that revelation, I want to add another nail in the coffin. 2 Peter 2 and 
2 and 4. Watch this. 2 Peter, 2 chapter, verse 4. For God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them unto chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Didn't Paul tell us, look, no, you're not good. We should judge angels. Right. Judgment ain't going down in the seventh day. It's going after the thousand years. It's expired in the eighth day. Mm. So he said we should judge angels. They reserved until judgment. You know what I'm saying? And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing them into a flood upon the world of the ungodly. Wait a minute. A person. That means he not got left out. He died on the other side of the flood. Just FYI. That's why I said the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Notice verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Let's get down to verse 9. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So now, let's go, uh, uh, skip down in the same chapter to verse, uh, no, I'm sorry. Now let's go to Revelations. 20 and 12. We almost done, y'all. One other passage after then we'll be done. But look, Revelation 20 and 12, this is after the seventh day. This is in the eighth day. Because remember, the book said, after a thousand years, Satan shall be loosed. Which is with each one of these represent a thousand years. So after the seventh day, now we in the eighth day, and watch this. Verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open. Uh oh. So now he opening up the books. Oh, the one he said, then the author spoke on his name. Hmm. So now the book is being opened. And he said, another book was open. That's all we deal with book on the Sabbath. And you notice what they don't do on the first day of the week. They really don't deal with book. They really don't. So when the Lord actually opened up the book on the people that come after today, on the, on the first day of the week, or after the Sabbath, this is what we look at. The book going to get opened up on them, y'all. And when that happens, no, he says, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books According to their works. Let's go see this in Daniel 7 chapter. Daniel 7 and verse 9. The same thing we're reading right here in Revelation 20 chapter. This is being spoken on right here. This is the eighth day right here. Eight days group right here. Daniel 7 and 9. So I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days sit, did sit. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his hair was like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Notice, here we go. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him. So you got thousands and thousands ministering unto him. Now let's see how many stand in front of him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. And the judgment was set and the books was open. That's the rest of the dead, y'all. The Lord is showing you the one that's going to be giving judgment, that's raising up in that first one's race. That's going to be a small number compared to 10,000 times 10,000. I think that's 100 billion. I think that's what that is. But the comparison of thousands and thousands to 10,000, huge difference, y'all. Huge difference. And it said the judgment was set. set and the books was open. So let's go keep reading about these books. Man. So when you think about getting in that 70, that's where you want to be. That's where you want to be. You want to come up. So now all that, now everyone is standing before the judgment seat of Christ. But think about it. Like I tell the brothers, I say, hey, think about when you go to court. Now, you you the one that's standing there before the judge. But what you think the staff is doing? What you think the clerk, the clerk for the judge is doing? Or the bailiff? Or the time, everybody that's on staff, they sitting back, they chilling, they like, okay, they ain't worried about it, okay, they they ministering to the judge, but that's gonna be the same way it's gonna be in the eighth day. But think about how you feeling when you're in front of that judge. Ooh. Man, just let that marinate on your mind. 
That's why the Lord said, for the Feast of Tabernacles, we rejoice for seven days. Because we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days that we're dwelling in this body of death. But on the eighth day, we come out. And it's also called the Solemn Assembly. Amen. I know that. Let's read this right quick. I got to go to Luke, Numbers 29 and 55. 35. Numbers 29 and 35. Numbers 29 and 35. Gonna be a solemn assembly. The solemn and grave, very serious. You picture you, you ain't been dealing with no Bible. You standing before God and you see that fire over there. And you like, like I tell the boy, it's like going to a casino, y'all. You I don't know how many gamblers I'm just looking at this, but uh you in there and you go in there, oh, did you crap out? Or is you gonna make it? That's what it's gonna be like. But right here, numbers 29. And 35. Watch this. On the eighth day, you should have a solemn assembly. That's what's going on. That's the eight. That's that solemn assembly right there. Very serious. Very grave. Very, very grave. They're gonna be, the picture's gonna be looking like you're gonna be seeing people looking like that. And then you wanna view next. Very solemn thoughts. Very solemn thoughts gonna be coming to your mind. Very grave. When you're looking in the books. That's why he said, on the eighth day, you shall have a solemn sin. You shall do no service by work day in, but you shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire. That's why that fire, that eighth day fire wasn't the same that burnt on the seventh day. That's why the Lord said in the Feast of Tabernacles, rejoice for seven days. Rejoice that the Lord's mercy and grace is here. Rejoice that you are learning. You have the opportunity to stay out that day. Because when that eighth day comes, ooh, it's not going to be a pretty picture, y'all. And here go the flesh. He said, sacrifice made by fire, the sweet Savior, unto the Lord. One bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year without blemish. Then meat offering. He said, meat on the eighth day. What meat you think that is? That's that meat that's going in the lake of fire. That's what that represents. That burnt offering. We're looking right there. You want to be that burnt offering? That's why we believe in keeping the Lord's Sabbath day. Because we want to be judges on the eighth day. Not that uh, meat offering. On the eighth day. Okay? Mm -hmm. Woo. Now skip down to verse in the same chapter. That's why he called it set feasts. Verse 39. These things shall you do unto the Lord in your set feasts. Why he called it set? Because it's set from the first day. Day one, the Lord said, Who won't keep my commandments? Who won't keep my laws? That's why he said from Abel all the way out. In the, in the Hebrews in chapter 11. They without us should not be made perfect. So all of us from Abel, from day one, all of us said, who, gonna, who believe my word? Who keep my commandments? That's why he swore they're not going to enter to his day of rest. That don't believe. So now it's set. The eighth day is set. Boom. Ooh, scary thoughts, y'all. So now let's go Let's go to uh, back to Revelation 20 chapter. Revelation 20. The Lord said it. Now watch this. <clears throat> And the sea gave up the dead which was in it. And death and hell. See, this is when death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to his works. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. So now that first death ends in the eighth day. Right here. That's what this line represents. That first death. All the way from when we got judged to the first death. Now the second death is on the table. Hmm. So now, back in the book. He said, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So now let's go to our last place here. I'm going to go to Matthew's uh, 25th chapter. And we'll be done. Matthew's 25th chapter. Whew. Matthew's 25 and 31. This is the eighth day script right here, y'all. Start from the seventh, actually start from the seventh day going into the eighth day. Matthew 25 and 31. And the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. He did that in the seventh day. I thought Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord. So we're looking at from the seventh day. Now watch this. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Wait, all nations couldn't stand before him. In the seventh day, when did all when did great and small come up, y'all? After the thousand years, because we can read that the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years was finished. So now we're looking at the eighth day, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divide his sheep from the goats. 
Now, how? What's the behavior of the sheep, y'all? They follow their, they follow their shepherd. What the goats do? They stubborn. You got man. Come on, man. Dang, dude. Why you gonna be so hard and stiff neck? Anyway, but that's the behavior. He should set his sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. That's why the Lord judge it. That's why he said, you shall return and you shall discern between those that were service God and him that serveth him not. Amen. See, then shall the king say unto, him, to, um, to them on his right hand, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the word that was set. That's why the Lord's feast called set feast because he said it. So when you get to that eighth day, whenever you observe the eighth day, you are saying, Lord, right now you're saying, Lord, I don't want to be a part of that people that's standing before you to get judged. I want to be a judge. Amen. But the people that don't even care about this, might on me, Jack. Man, look, I'm going, man, I'm going. There. I, you're going to be standing there looking at that burnt offering. And you just might be it. You just might be that goat. Okay? But let's get down to verse uh, uh, 41. Then say said unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Boom, that's the eighth day, y'all. That is the eighth day. So now, <clears throat> uh, let me go to this one last place here, uh, Matthew 7, 21. I want to leave this out. And we're going to end it here. Because this is an eighth day shot right here, y'all. This is the last place. Matthew 7 and 21. So we're going from what happens just in 46 day, during the seventh day, no, just before the seventh day, which is the sixth day. Let me, let me turn this way. We're going from the sixth day, which is just before the seventh day. We're going during the seventh day. Now we just got to speaking on what's happening after the seventh day, which is the last day of the first death and the last day of flesh and blood, because we had God the May God in there. And they went upon the camp of the saints. We read that after the thousand years, not before. They didn't go toward the seventh day. They went after the seventh day. They let nobody deceive you. Oh, but see, just before the seventh day. Good. Bleed the book. Don't be cursed. Because the first death ends in the eighth day. And flesh and blood cease to occur in the eighth day. That's when you get to change your blood. You're going to become that burnt offering or you're going to be that sheep that was found good. So here we go. Here go the, here go the one the Lord going to tell I never knew. This, this is the eighth day shot right here. And here we go. Whew. Now everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, should enter to the kingdom of heaven. Because not everyone believed the Jesus of this Bible. Now notice. <clears throat> but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many would say unto me that day. Remember we read 10,000 times 10,000. Going to stand before the Lord and the book's going to be open. Woo, that's a scary thought, y'all. And you look at that burn, look at that guy burning right there, man. You see, that when you get a close shot of that. Ooh. This is the eighth day, the solemn assembly. This is the circumcision of man. This is the circumcision of man. Because the Lord, we can read it. He says, eight, he that's eight days old must be circumcised. That's why it said from the beginning. The Lord said it. On the eighth day, he cutting off the wicked. So let's look how they're going to get cut off. Oof. Many were saying to me in that day, that's that 10,000 times 10,000, y'all. <clears throat> Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name had cast out devils? And in thy name had done many wonderful works? And then were I profess unto them, I never knew you. So how could they have possibly even gotten to the seventh day? The Lord did. So we know this is an eighth day shot. I said, I don't know you, but it's people of God, they know him. That's how you go to the difference between the eighth day and the seventh day. These, he's going to tell, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So we have clearly go on and establish the fact that the close of the sixth day, you got Armageddon closing out the sixth day, that trumpet, that last trumpet going to blow, first day of the seventh month, boom. Earth is in the reign of Christ, which the seventh angel sounded, and the kingdom of this world, according to Revelation 11, 15, becomes the kingdom of our Lord and our Lord Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Revelation 20 chapters tell you, for a thousand years we're going to reign with Christ. 
then we read Revelation 27, after the thousand years has expired, now we're going to the eighth day. Now we're going to the times when the judgment of the angels is going to happen. When the time when the judgment of ungodly men is going to happen. The time when that great white throne opens, which is the last day of man. Period. When he's going to get changed over to either be that eternal burnt offering and that flame fire toward men forever and ever, or he's going to be that sheep that the Lord going to bring into his kingdom. He said, Blessed into you, into the kingdom of the Father. Because now, we done came up to the 14th day of the month. Of the, sorry, 14th day of the creation. Because this is, oh, judgment is over. So I'm going to leave it right there. I could go a little further. Talking about the 14th day and the king. The, uh, uh, matter of fact, we just got to read this in one last part. I got to go to Revelation 20th chapter to close it out. This is the last part, y'all. Sorry about that. Last part. Can't leave this one now. Revelation 21 and 1. Because the books is open, now it's all done. Everything is over. Here we go. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no more sea. This is why Paul said, Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard that which God has prepared. Because when he said no more sea, it's going to be, this is the new beginning. After the eighth day, that's why the Passover, he said, I'm drinking new with you in the Father's kingdom. So with that being said, uh, here we go, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Because this represents the coming down of the Father. Remember, the Father ain't judging nobody, y'all. Amen. All gentlemen, we can read it's committed to the Son. Yeah, can't be in the seventh And it's saint. <laughs> How could it be in the seventh day? He ain't let the wicked in there. That's why I say he got loose after that. That's why he's rebuking many nations doing it. Because you ain't not, you gonna walk through, you walking in the way I command. To the eighth day get here. So I saw a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God, and you shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Because it ended on the eighth day. After the thousand years. Y'all remember during the seventh day, he said a sinner shall be accursed at a hundred. A child said die at a hundred during the seventh day, but in the eighth day, he taken death out the picture. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are past away and he said and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new he that said unto me right for these words are true and faithful these words not opinions y'all so I hope you guys understand what happens just before the seventh day during the seventh day and after the seventh